Our scripture today will be from the book of Psalms, Psalms number 21. Psalms 21 has in it a total of 13 verses. I think it would be good today to read the entire chapter. Would you be so kind, please, to turn to this portion of the word of the Lord and be prepared to take an active part in the reading of Psalms 21. The choir has reminded us not that we needed reminding, but they felt to just let us know today that God keeps on blessing us over and over. It's refreshing to know that regardless of what God has done and all that he has done and all that he has blessed you with and all that he's brought you through and whatever God has done he is not finished we can anticipate the continued blessings of the Lord especially if we walk in his word and obey his will he keeps on blessing us they will bless us with another song 
And then we will read Psalms 21, the entire chapter. We're going to ask Elder Tyree to conduct the reading of this chapter. God bless the choir.
Psalms 21, verses 1 through 13. We shall be responsibly. When you have it, say amen. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation house greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and hast not withholden the requests of his lips. For thou revenest him with the blessings of goodness, and thou settest a crown of her gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days, forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him more blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. My hand shall not find out all thy enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as fiery ovens in the time of thy anger. And the Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagine a mysterious vice which thou hast not been able to perform. Therefore shall they them turn their back, when thou shalt make ready thy arrows upon thy string against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thy own strength, so will they sing and praise thy power. Thank God this morning for the reading of his word. Bless your name, Jesus. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Till he speaks from eternity. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men. Oh, lift him up, lift him up, till he speaks from eternity. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men. Let us sing it. Oh, lift him up, lift him up, till he speaks from eternity. up the name of Jesus, extol his righteous and holy name. Yes, yes. What an opportunity we have today. We have never seen this day before. We've never been on this earth before on this day. And so since we are here for the first time today, we ought to magnify the God of our salvation. Worship Him. Our praise. Our worship today should be better than it was yesterday. Our worship today should, have, should be better than it was last week. Every round goes higher and higher. Thank God, thank God. And now we've come to the phase of our service that we give to you the opportunity of coming and standing and communicating with your God. Isn't that a wonderful privilege? We can come into his presence 
Hallelujah. and make known our requests yes, yes. unto him. I do not know today what your condition may be. I do know that we've had death in our church in several families. There are several of you have been sick and God has delivered many of you. Thank God and we've heard of your testimonies of how God has been wonderful to you. Amen. But we still need a touch of the master's hand. We still need him to help us and bless us and inspire us. And so today, if you're here, if you're here with a burden, if you're here with a sickness, if you have an emergency, if you have a condition over which there seems to be no cure, a pain which seemingly never ceases, a problem that lingers on day after day, whatever the case is, we can cast all of our care upon him. God bless you now as you come. Expressing to God your desire. And letting him know that you still lean on him and still trust and depend on him. Praise the Lord. And today we have those among us who are grieving in their hearts. Because death has once again visited another family. But truly God is still on the throne. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Let us sing this song that we sing every Sunday when we come. This refrain, these words that are very simple, but they should come from our hearts. I need glory to God. The I need thee. I Lord, I need thee. Every hour, every hour. The glory to God. Every hour, every hour, every hour. I Sing it from the depths of your heart. Oh, bless me. me. Thank you, Jesus. I see. Savior. Oh, God. I, Lord, I come to. Once more, all over the temple, I need glory to God. Heaven help us. I need thee right now, right now. Glory to God. Every hour. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, bless. bless me. Bless me. Help me right now. My Savior. Lord, I come. I glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let every heart pray. Tell God all about it. Let him know how you feel. Let him know you trust him. And that you believe him. Let us all pray at this hour. God our Father. Our King. Our Savior. And our Lord. Here we are again. Seeking your face. Calling upon your name. Here we are again, Lord, telling you we still need you. Letting you know we cannot fight our own battle. We cannot make our own way. We've just come to tell you, oh Lord, we need your helping hand. We need your spirit, your power. Oh God, 
We need to feel your joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. Thank you for the peace that you've given us, O oh God. Thank you for every storm that we've been able to come through. You have been there when we have needed you. You're always with us when we're grateful and we're thankful. Now, Lord, your children stand before this altar. My God, and they're looking to you for continued strength. Satan has not ceased his attack. Satan has not surrendered. The battle is still raging. Still testing us. He is still tormenting us. God, we are standing here right now. We're saying, help us. Help us some more. Help us again. Help us right now. Even today, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we know God. If we can just keep on praising you, if we can just keep on saying hallelujah, if we can just keep on saying glory, the storm will not override us. Sickness cannot contain us, for we are yet magnifying and go hallelujah, glorifying your name. Thank you, Jesus. Bless us, I pray, oh God. Defeat the powers of darkness. Satan, we plead the blood. We've got the blood of Jesus on our side. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. We have the anointing that's resting upon us. We have the power that's down within us. Glory, glory, glory. We claim victory. We claim victory. In the midnight hour, we're still claiming victory. Early in the morning, we're claiming victory. 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 Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Satan, you must go. You must go. The blood's against you. You must go. The name of the Lord is against you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We still believe that God is going to bring us out. We still give God the glory. In spite of every tear. In spite of every heartache. In spite of every hardship. We still give God all the glory. He's still a good God. He's still a wonderful counselor. The mighty God. The Prince of Peace. Oh, oh, oh. Glory. glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, we ask these favors. Clap your hands and just thank God as you go back to your seat. 13 of this 14th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. Let us remember Sister Luann, it's no longer Thompson, I forget the Porter. She will be operated on, on Tuesday of this week. So let us pray for her. Amen. We just have to keep praying and asking the Lord to be kind to his people and bless them. I received a call this week. I have a very dear, precious friend in Kentucky, down in the Lebanon, Kentucky area. He was a pastor there. His name was Pastor Baker. Uh, we have some people 
here who knew him. I do know that we did have in the church some people from that area. Pastor Baker was a very dear friend of mine. He pastored a little church down in Kentucky in the country. And he would call me and talk to me at various times. He, he just said, uh, he would call me and he would say, Praise the Lord, Bishop, this is your friend, Pastor Baker. And he said, I hope you don't mind. I don't get a chance to talk to a bishop until I call you. I don't know what he meant by that, but he and I were very close, and he would invite me down to Kentucky to go fishing with him. And uh, I just got a call this week. I called to talk with the bishop down there yesterday. And Pastor Baker is passed away some weeks ago and is buried. And I knew nothing about it. I had not heard. He was taken to the hospital with pneumonia. And I think they had took him to the hospital like 12 noon. And 6 o'clock that evening, Pastor Baker was gone to be with the Lord. So I will miss him. But I know the Lord will take care of that little church. I preached in that church years and years ago, even before I married, when I went through the state of Kentucky preaching. I preached in that little, I'm trying to think of that little place that it's in. Um, the little town doesn't come to my mind at the moment, but it's near Lebanon, Kentucky. Very fine few saints in that little place, but I enjoyed there when I, whenever I went. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 13. Bless him, bless him. Uh, verse 12, I'm sorry. The word of the Lord came again to me saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trans." by trespassing grievously. Then will I stretch out mine hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it, so that it be desolate that no man may pass through because of the beasts, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Verse 14 will serve as the text for today. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Bless him, bless him, bless him. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. I would like, by the help of the Lord and by the strength that God would give today, to discuss this, these verses with you and to convey to your hearts the fact that you must seek to save your own soul. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you to know, dear saints, that 
your soul is your responsibility spiritually as it relates to its status before God you and I are responsible. This passage in the book of Ezekiel, if you will read the chapter, the entire chapter, you will see that God is calling for repentance of his people who have drifted from the presence of God and from <clears throat> the word of God. And it seems that when God begins to send <clears throat> punishment upon the people, it's important to know that when people have turned from God and sinned against God by trespassing grievously, God will not only deal <coughs> with the people and their unrighteousness, but it says, and it seems that the land also suffers. Bless him, bless him, bless him. The prophet Ezekiel, as he prophesies to the people of God, we remember him as being <coughs> one of the captives by the river of Chebar. And while sitting there by the river of Chebar, God gives him this revelation. And he was able to record this book that we call e Ezekiel. One thing that God hates Of course, we know that God despises all sin, all evil. God is against. He does not look kindly upon <coughs> the unrighteousness of his folks. But God cannot tolerate idolatry. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> he tells his people from time to time throughout his word and Ezekiel is no exception. God warns his people about idolatry. The fact that they would turn to another God This is what has always angered God. And in fact, when he gave Israel the Ten Commandments through Moses, first thing he wanted his people to know that he was against idolatry. Jesus. Because he said, don't take unto you any graven image I will not tolerate you having another God before me. The Ten Commandments were recorded by Moses on tables of stone. Four of these commandments, the first four, regulate man's relationship to God. They were written on one stone. The second six 
are those commandments regulate man's relationship to man. Those six were written on the other stone. And so God has never allowed himself to allow man to stray from him and to form another God, the thing that broke God's heart, so to speak, was after God himself had delivered his folks from bondage. Then, later on, they turned to another God. God had taken care of them over 400 years that they remained in the land of bondage. Then God delivered them out of bondage and carried them into the land of promise. But before they got to the land of promise, they became guilty of idolatry. This breaks God's heart. And I want you to know today you also break God's heart when you when you come to him in prayer, when you are sick or you have issues or you have problems for which you go to God and ask him to assist you and help you. But it is insulting to God when you bow down on your knees and seek him knowing in your heart that while you seek him, you don't believe him. This makes God angry. This hurts God. This breaks his heart. When we bow down and ask him to do something knowing in your heart that he may not do it. That's not the way to come to God and to get results. But because of sin on the part of God's people, famine came to the land and God broke off the staff of the bread, sent famine upon it, and he said, I will cut off man and beast from it because you have polluted my land with your transgressions. I called you out of bondage to be my folks. God said I did this to get closer to you. But instead you have wandered farther from me and you have turned to another God. Jesus. And so the Lord says, I'll stretch out my hand. I'm here to say to you today, you cannot survive by disregarding and disrespecting the God of your salvation. Amen. You ought to know that if God forgave you of your sins and heard your plea and delivered you and brought you into the church Hallelujah. and then he warned you don't ignore me don't have no other gods before me 
God said it loud and clear, I am a jealous God. And I will not give my glory to another. God gets upset. God has a fit, so to speak. When you try to put something or somebody before him, especially after he has extended to you endless mercy. Glory to God. God reached down in the muck and mire of life. I'm glad to go in a restaurant and see the cook put on rubber gloves. I'm happy for that. I don't know how good it does, but I'm glad to see it. But God reached down in the muck and the filth in the mire of life, he didn't need rubber gloves. He just reached on down in that mess you were in, brought you up out of a horrible pit, planted your feet on a solid rock, and established your going. How dare you today? After God has done all of that, take matters into your own hands and say, I'll serve God when I got time or when I get ready. God wants you to know, I will not only deal with you, but I'll deal with the land in which you live. I'll dry up the streams. I will send a famine in the land. And I want you to know today there is a famine in the land. It's not a famine of bread and water so much, but it is a famine of the word of God. Bishop Bowers, how can you say there's a famine for the word of God when all this preaching is going on? Famine for the truth. For the true message of salvation. I want you to know God did not establish this organism, this church. Shed his blood and give his life for it. And then allow you to set the terms by which and through which men can belong to it. God did not leave that decision to man. Although we know that he did use men to preach his gospel and establish the requirements for the church those men were under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. God handpicked those men that he was going to use. Gave them the authority. Put the keys in their hand. <coughs> Said go preach the gospel to every creature. And that they did. So today, we who preach the gospel, we don't have the right to manufacture our own church, our own process. We've got to imitate what Peter said and James said and John said. They were the apostles. And so the Lord today says, I will not stand back and observe men turn away from me. Turn to another God. Worship another God. Form a God with their hands. God said, I won't stand for it. Because this is my world. 
I made this world. That idol God you have has no life. He cannot make anything, but I made everything, even him. Praise God, and God says, I will convince men, I will show men who is the real God. Thank God, and I'm going to stretch out my hand, and I'll dry up the sea. I'll send the famine in the land, and you will know who's in charge. I just come to tell you today, God is still on the throne. It doesn't matter what's transpiring. It doesn't matter. What is going on? But can't you see God showing his power? God is not letting man get away with abusing his creation. And not only that, but you need to know that God made you. And your, your body should be for the temple of the Holy Ghost. And God wants you to know, I made your body. Thank God, but if you take your body and use it and abuse it and defile it, mm -hmm. God is saying, I'm still in charge. Thank God, and you will be called into judgment. God is telling you today, that body that you live in, I made you that body. You cannot take that body and do with it what you choose. You can't take it anywhere you want to go. I made you. I created you. Thank God in my image, but I'm trying to help you to be like me. I know we see these programs on television where so many people are trying to find out who my father is and who my mother is and who, who brought me into this world and Sometimes the mothers don't even know who the father was, and so they just take a guess. And it ain't even an educated guess. It's just a guess. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But God wants you to know, I made your body. Thank God, and I made your body to glorify me. I made your body to serve me. Your body is supposed to be my temple, the Holy Ghost. Is supposed to dwell in your body. But God wants you to know. Look at the condition of this world. Look at the diseases. Look at the death that's reeking. And devouring the bodies of men. Because people have not taken the body. That God gave them. And using it for the purpose. For which it is intended. <clears throat> Thank God. Oh yes. Yeah, some of us. Amen. I wonder sometimes as I look at a, some of our young men walk up and down the streets and I cannot understand for one moment how they think that their underwear is so attractive that they got to show it as they walk. And sometimes I'm, I've looked and I've been amazed. Uh, what is it that keeps their pants up? I don't understand it. But I want you to know, you can't take this body and put on it whatever you choose to put on it. It's God's body. Clap your hand and say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Let me move on today. And so God is dealing with, with these people and as you come down. To the 14th verse, God said, there are three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, if they're in this world of famine. <coughs> Amen. And when I get ready to destroy this earth and send judgment into the world, these three men, thank God if they're in it, when I come through, they shall deliver. Thank God, but their own souls will be delivered by their own righteousness. Thank God, and because they have regulated their life before me and are living like I have asked them to live, I will spare them. I will not destroy them, but I will prosper them and bless them because they're trying to regulate their life before me. 
as it ought to be. And I just come to tell you that you are responsible for your own soul. Amen. You are responsible for your own regulation to the God of your salvation. You can't blame me. I can't blame you. I've got to seek God and search for him and find him for myself and live as it pleases him in obedience to his divine word. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the Bible tells us uh, it's no longer the case that your, 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 your people have eaten sour grapes and your, your, your teeth are set on edge. Amen. That's no longer in, in force today. Every soul has got to meet God for yourself. Every individual. You can't blame mother or father or sister or brother. You've got the, there's nobody for you to blame. Uh, but yours, hallelujah, uh, but yourself. And so uh, you've got to regulate uh, your own conduct before God. Uh, you've got to serve Him uh, as it pleases Him. Uh, you've got to walk according uh, uh, to the Word of God Almighty. Uh, you've got to lift up the bloodstained banner. Uh, you've got to say down in your own soul, uh, oh, This is my soul. Uh, this is my future. Uh, this is my eternity. I'm not about to be a fool and let Satan destroy me but I'm going to step out and separate myself. I'm going to try to please the God of my salvation. That's why we persevere. That's why some of us come here every now and then and get around this altar when service is not going on and seek the God of our salvation and say, Lord, I want to go through. I want to be what you have me to be. I want to con con condescend and humble myself and be at the servant that God would have me to be. And so, saints of God, amen, you've got to regulate your own relationship with God. You've got to seek righteousness and live righteous and do righteous. And then when God God Almighty uh, begins to pronounce judgment uh, upon this earth. Uh, amen. God will say, uh, I'll destroy the earth, uh, but not you, uh, because your own righteousness uh, has come up before me. Uh, you sought me. You have uh, attempted to humble, hallelujah, to humble yourself uh, under the mighty hand of God. Uh, clap your hand uh, and say, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And so it is. When we read back in the Bible, amen, we can read about Noah, Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 8. The Bible tells me that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was not like his generation. He found grace. He obeyed God's word. He carried out God's commandment and God's orders according to what he wanted Noah to do. And so Noah preached for 120 years. Noah built the ark and did what God told him because he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And God said, I'm going to spare Noah. And then when we read about Daniel, the Bible says, and when you look in the book of Daniel, you see that Daniel would not defile him Himself, uh, with the king's meat. Uh, he would not eat the diet uh, that the king had sent down. Uh, but Daniel purposed uh, in his own heart, uh, I'm going to do what God uh, wants me to do. Uh, I just come to tell you, uh, you've got to make it up uh, in your own mind. You've got to settle the issue uh, uh, down in your soul. Uh, you may have friends uh, and well wishers. Uh, 
that pull you in the opposite direction. You may have family members that are trying to pull you away from the church of the almighty God, but you got a purpose in your own heart. I made it up in my own mind. I will not defile myself. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I heard the prophet say a highway shall be there. It shall be called of the way of holiness and no unclean thing shall walk upon it. And even if you be a fool, you won't err therein. I'm so glad I found the highway. I'm so happy I'm on the right road now. I'm glad I found the path that leads to salvation today. Amen. Clap your hand and say hallelujah. Now just pray for me for just a little while. Hallelujah. Amen. And ask the Lord to have his way. But I'm just here to tell you, you can't serve God being wishy-washy sometimes up and sometimes down. I don't care if I do. I don't care if I don't. That will not work over here in the church of the Almighty. You've got to make up in your mind that I am over here but to stay Lord until I die I hallelujah I'm going to stand the test I'm going to press the battle to the gate come hell or high water I'm over here to stay you see I'm not over here just to get my body healed I'm not over here just to plant some seed and get some income a new car amen all of that is wonderful but my soul is anchored in the word of hallelujah in the word of God my soul is hungry my soul needs to know it's God a new car won't satisfy your soul a new suit won't satisfy that spiritual appetite I I want God Almighty to step inside of me. Hallelujah. I want to know that my soul is safe and secure. That's what the Holy Ghost did when it came in. It penetrated your soul. It's your soul that gets hungry. It's your soul that is crying out in the midnight hour. It's your soul that needs the power of the almighty God. Amen. And so Daniel uh, purposed in his heart. Uh, amen. Daniel made up uh, in his mind. Uh, I'm going to do the thing uh, that God wants me to do. Uh, and then in Job uh, uh, chapter 1 uh, and verse 22, uh, it said in all of this, uh, uh, Job sinned not. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, everything he had uh, was taken away from him. Uh, but Job... Uh, held on to the God that gave him all of these things in the first place. If God gave it to you, if God comes back to take it away from you, it's not yours. It's really God's. He just loaned it to you and when God gets ready he'll come back and gather up his stuff. But the Lord gave, the Lord took away. Blessed be the name name of the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so when you read about Job, it tells me that when Job lost all of these things and even his flesh began to fall from his bones, the Bible said Job sat down in the sackcloth <laughs> in the ashes and Job said the Lord gave and the Bible is very clear it says Job worshipped a God almighty